Oh, perfect. <laughs> Howdy, That's Christian. Man. What is up? Oh, not too much. Uh, first off, just thanks for your honesty and vulnerability. Um, I think that goes a long way. So my, uh, I don't know. Thanks to you for doing that. Yeah, thanks, man. Appreciate it. So what's up? I could have a baby any day now. Uh, what? So if, if I didn't I looked, know that. If I look disheveled. Uh, maybe that's why. Maybe um, I did know that. I forgot that. And my wife's due on Friday. Oh, uh, my gosh. Two days from now. Dude, congratulations. That's number three, right? Four. Whoa, four. I'm, see, I'm completely yeah. wrong. See, I mean, I've been listening to the Collinses so much that I just <laughs> have to keep having more kids. So, Oh, yeah, four. Yeah, we we we. I think we've cut it off at three. So, <laughs> man, that's good, though, that you, Elon Musk is also encouraging you to have babies as well. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> Elon's reproductive strategies are not something that I would. Speaking of um, evolution. <laughs> yeah, I would. I'm not sure I'd recommend that. Uh, I think he underestimates the importance of being a present, active father. I and agree. overestimates his genetics. Here's Joseph. What's up, man? What are you thinking about? Oh no, I'm just here to get Sam to talk. Um, talk his way into a debate with Jay Dyer or, or something, you know, no, I'm, I'm kidding. You know, he, he, here's, here's the thing that's just crazy to me is just listening to everything you said, I'll be, I'll be brief here because uh, I don't have anything insightful to say, but uh, um, noticing, cause I, I watched the whole, everything you're, you're saying there, it was just trip down memory lane. You know, I, I remember watching Peterson, in college 2016 and just just the 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 current everything's gone culturally and what i find very strange is how even today there are people that will brand someone like peterson as a sexist or he's like a radical guy or you know like that there's those talking points that have kind of always existed on the left and then on the right you know there's the accusations that he's um you know, uh, influential person like uh, Nicholas Fuentes, who will just brand Peterson as like uh, a tool for Israel or, or something, you know, outlandish. Um, but what what what's interesting is that the, those the, the, those two, I, I guess, extremities both look at him and what has kind of fallen out here with um the IDW into the TLC and other, other uh, veins. But the, the, what's interesting is that the right initially was like all over Peterson. And it, it kind of feels like it's a, a case of like misdiagnosis of the problem that's going on where you, let's say you're working with a number like pi and you don't have all you have, you have not enough decimals of pi for a very precise calculation to something like uh, a, a spacecraft reaching somewhere and you need like five decimals and, and and you'll get there just fine if you have too few you, you can go land let's say you're just working with three you know that that's not going to be too great of calculations but what i'm i'm trying to get at here is is what i i i think this whole process has been under uh, discovering has been like diagnosing is the situation is critical and that that's like what sober mindedness is right is to be able to look at and perceive the reality of a, of the situation and i feel like we've been in an ever expanding conversation of diagnosis of what what is the, the cultural failing right now what what is the failing of of the broader christian world um these sorts of things and i i think it just validates the the direction the tlc is going in rather than these sectarian positions from the left or the right not to sound like an enlightened centrist or something but it it really does feel like um I don't know. I it feels like vindicated vindication just continues with the direction something like the TLC is going, even though there's, you know, things all across the board. But I don't know. That's just Sam thoughts. 
Were you listening to any of that? I, yeah, I was listening to a little bit of it. I, you know, am also simultaneously semi working, but uh, join the crowd. Yeah, I do <laughs> feel like TLC is getting vindicated. Although one comment I left on PVK's video today was I thought that that conversation, the recent one between um, Verveke, Peugeot, and Jordan Hall, was like when PVK played like a four-year-old clip or something from Peugeot and Verveke talking, I found it more interesting than the most recent clip. And I almost wonder if there was a little bit more drama in the early stages that made for more productive conversations that's a little bit lost. I, I felt like that that recent three-way conversation was not the greatest and that oh uh, yeah i mean it's just like verveki you clearly have some problems with christianity that you still want to get off your chest you don't yeah. want to like and you don't it out right easy. just just spit it out they're grown yeah, yeah. They and take it you know yeah. it's stop being yeah. so agreeable and like you have the trust and relationship with these people yeah. be honest lay into it get into the the things that you disagree about and i i just thought that there was a little bit more spiciness in the early conversations. Oh yeah. Kind of replaced by just, I don't know, gratuitous niceness and compliments. <laughs> I think I, I, on a recent, uh, Brendan Graham didn't see conversation with Verveke, the most recent one they had. Verveke said he does not see Christian theism as tenable direct. He, he, he so, you know, the, I guess try like being able to say that in those other spaces, you know, to try to, I guess let the iron sharpen. Uh, a say little. that to Pejo and and and, and um, yeah. Hall then, right? Yeah, and give a couple points and and say, look, Jordan, I really you know respect your recent decision, except I think your position is completely untenable. <laughs> but I, I, reason, let's reason, just see reason. How John goes with his Neoplatonic Taoism in two generations. I didn't yeah. know he had kids, but are his kids robust Neoplaton Taoists? You know, like, give me a break. Like, that's going to pass on for more than, you know, I don't well, know. That, that would that would also go back into, though, is that that type of liberalized mindset that, you know, let, let your kids discover it for themselves. Mm -hmm. That would probably be like somewhere cooking in the background like code. You know, it's like, no, I'm not going to push that on my kids, you know, as opposed to. Yeah, sure. something Christian that would say, "No, I want raise your raise them up in the in the love of the Lord or whatever." You know, it's but like, but everything they're talking about in that conversation with, you know, self emptying, kenosis, uh, agape, those things you have to just you just do it in a community. You just yeah yeah exactly. Um, Verveki stopped. Yep, uh, no, but but what, what the irony is that. You need a you need a body to practice that in, and that's a church. It's just going to be a church. Um, so I, look, us Orthodox guys are having a hard enough time getting to church, you know. Let alone uh, your Neoplatonic Taoists, <laughs> but um, you know, hey, you so. guys still have more churches than us Biblical Unitarians. So stop uh, as it should be, as it should be. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> oh, I'm telling man. you, I could go to about. What's there the are about 20, 20 Orthodox churches between me and my nearest Unitarian church. That's because the diaspora likes California. You know, the, those Slavs and Greeks are like, man, who wants to move to Minnesota? Um, but no, he's in he's in Chicago. I, I'm in Chicago. Oh, you're in like, Chicago. I thought you were. You, lot, I thought you lots said you were. Well, I okay. mean, where is my big fat Greek wedding set? I oh, thought you're in. I, I thought you're in California. You're in Chicago. My bishop's in Chicago. So there you go. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, sorry, I, the, whenever I, I see Sam and the Trinity stuff, I just got to say something that's really funny is I brought up the Jay Dyer thing because, you know, people just want to when they see a theological position, they just think they go back into that mentality, Christian, that you're describing of the evolution, intelligent design, young earth creationism. They go into that frame. Yeah. And so, like, even when George, when, when um Jordan and Jonathan were talking to John Verveke. I was seeing in the comments, and this made me want to just blow my <laughs> blow up. Is uh, uh, someone was like, "Oh, John Verveke should talk to Jay Dyer." Oh, oh, oh. 
wow, why didn't we think of that? That would have been so. <laughs> that could like, maybe no. bring out Verveke's disagreeable side. I yeah, think he'd have yeah, to. Yeah. Like, what a, what a stupid comment. I couldn't even imagine <laughs> that. You've missed the point entirely. Um, yeah. It could be interesting. But I'd, I'd the, click the, on. It, I'd click on it for sure. Yeah, yeah, I'd click on. I'd tune out fast. But it, it goes away from this whole mode of synthesis. That if we want to get Hegelian about things, I guess. But you know, Christian was totally. I, I think you're right. We've been seeing this ongoing synthesis process, and um, it's like, yeah, way to just squash it out and just say, you know, m- how about how about right Verveke here. and Sam Shamoon? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, and you'll moderate it because you're you're a non-trinitarian and you can speak to you know. Oh, I'm not moderating that. That would be like trying to be a referee in a street fight. Uh, I don't even know who that second guy is. Shmoon, I don't know. Sh- uh, Sam fucking. Shimon, he's um uh, uh an apologist who really specializes after Islam and all this stuff. Oh, uh, okay. I definitely not TLC. You know, gotcha. content. He, he's the opposite of TLC. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Blood like, sports. Uh, Christian YouTube blood sport. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. well, that's what it used to I mean that but there's a certain appeal to that. That that was kind of what even the the ad hominem from the new atheist was was that was part of the appeal for people was was like yeah. all the you know the attack. It it, mm-hmm. it for me, being a, not a highly di- disagreeable person, like that, that actually pushed me. It was like, if that's what you have, I don't want it. You know, ultimately, mm-hmm. I mean, that was kind of how it landed for me. But some people, it lands like, oh, yeah, I'm going to I want to be on the attack on the attack team. So I think that's part of a little bit of sociology. But, you you know, uh, Joseph, what you were saying about um, this, this synthesis, this thread, I mean, it, it's a very it's <laughs> trying to thread the needle still yeah. is, is still uh a, a huge challenge. And I, I, that's the thing that surprised me so much was listening to Jordan say he was good. He decided to go to, to this thing that Brett's putting, helping put on. It, he's still trying. I mean, he's still trying to figure that out. Yeah. Like, it, like the way he was talking about, well, I'm curious, is this the way, is this, you know, cause, cause we're all, yeah, you got to make mistakes. You know, I, I like was, was Peterson going to daily wire? Was that a mistake? You know, did that was art the window? right move? It is art. Yeah. Yeah. Move? It's hard to tell. It's really hard to tell in the moment. So yeah. but, I don't know. I mean, I think I, I just know that for me, like I wouldn't be, I wouldn't feel like, I mean, there's a lot, they even, they even in their conversation, I think it was between the, the Brett and, Jordan conversation. I think it's the one I was just listening to. They talked about how the the it is different. Like talking on the internet about things is not as contentious as it was five years ago. There yeah. something has. I are you still there? Yeah, I I'm still here. Yeah. All, right. All right. Well, we'll just have to carry on. No, oh, you, you I'm broke back. up there. You broke up there, Chris. Sorry. I think my kids yeah. are home now, and they're. Yeah, they're watching Spongebob. I hope not. No, you're totally right. Where where the attention is going is going towards more productive conversation. And the the battle lines have already been drawn. If you want your uh, uh, apologetical blood sport slop, you you know where to go for that. And and there's still a, a huge focus on that stuff from wherever camp you want to go to but the real winners are going to be tlc adjacent you know i think mm-hmm. but. yeah and, and that's that's in my clip i shared with um with benjamin today you know he we, we talk about that the idw kind of was a popularization of alternative conversation yeah that yeah. was happening at certain levels and now it's happening in, within the populace which this is what this is and and it's that's honestly very, very, very beneficial for some people. I mean, for me, like I started this stream out being like part of me was was feeling shame or guilt because I didn't want I didn't feel like I wanted I didn't want to talk about politics or something. And I was either embarrassed to or ashamed to. And so that was that fed into that. That was a piece of feeding into part of a depression it was like because I've spent years, you know, I spent years that and that's and I'm wanting to evolve past that as a person you know and not because i want to be dogmatic but because i don't want to just continue to live 
inside my head. And I think that's that's part of estuary. That's part of this corner. That's part of uh, seeing these uh, second and tertiary people, Peugeot and Verbeke and Vanderclay, like start having this conversation. Randos, like the whole the whole thing is is related to that. And um, you know, so I want to continue. Sorry, exam- going go. back to Verbeke because you mentioned him. You know what it felt like with the most recent conversation with John and Jordan was like it felt like everyone was just trying to speak Verbekean. It was like, we want to just go to your side. And and the more earlier stuff was Jonathan was sitting in his frame of this is, you know, the Christian fever dream, medieval fever dream that I'm trying to espouse. And for <laughs> trying to translate it into his, you know, his lab coat language. Right. And so it's. <laughs> Now it's like, it. we're just going to talk about, uh, you know, salients, blah, blah, blah. It's like the being beyond non-being. And, yeah. You know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So do you, I mean, that was what Steven said in the comments that, uh, for was, he's, he's kind of cemented into that. And so it's like, yeah. they're trying to have to meet him there or something like that. I don't know. Uh, I saw that the recent Verveke Peterson conversation, though, which came out maybe it was the same day, I can't remember, as that three way one was much better. Uh, and I thought that perhaps maybe because Verveke doesn't feel like he'll be stepping on Jordan's theological sensitivities, because it's unclear if Jordan has such a thing, <laughs> um, that he felt a little bit more free. And, you know, I yeah. also think that in person is just a little bit easier, you know, face to face in the same room is easier. And I think that, um, you know, Jordan and Verveke have known each other, Peterson and Verveke to just, you know, to differentiate from Hall, they, they've known each other for a long time. And so I, I felt like that conversation was actually pretty good and interesting. And Peterson has a way of not just falling into Verveke language. Which is sure, interesting yeah. because yeah. he's he's been in the the lab right next door to Verveke's lab coat language the whole time, but he still doesn't feel any need to put it on or to show off that he can do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's well, a, that's a temptation when talking to Verveke is to show off that you can use his words as well as he can. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Maybe, uh, and I think for someone like Jordan, as you know, this was brought up on the Vanderclay stream or something was like. Uh, you know, being new to his Christianity, like that, temp- I don't know if it's a temptation, but it's, uh, you know, kind of wanting to evangelize, you know, like, um, and he's kind of in that state. And so I think that's also a tension that not in the first Verveke Jordan Hall conversations that they had, but like in that recent one is like, okay how much of this is evangelism now? Like, I honestly think that was a piece of it. And I think that's what kind of creates like a, the, the, a new tension or something that's even yeah. not as uh, synthetic and a little more rigid in, in the conversation. And I mean, can't blame Jordan for that, you know, in a certain way um, being excited and, and all that kind of stuff. But it's like, uh, and he, his, his, his type of evangelism is completely, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got like a different, you know, his, yeah, his Jim yeah. Rudd evangelism was, it kind of blew my mind on some of that stuff. But even still, like, it's just, um, I think that is a, I think that is a new dynamic that obviously that wasn't the case. Like, you, you have to also realize, like, you have, now you have two Christians talking to someone who's not. Mm-hmm. Isn't it interesting, in that, though, that, in that the- dynamic? Sorry, sorry, you, you, okay. uh, sorry to step on step on your toes, but um, isn't it interesting that it's kind of ambiguous as to what theological tradition Jordan is participating in now? Too, like it's just kind of generically Christian, <laughs> and, and and almost even not even that. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's like, right. It's like well, a, a half step back from mere Christianity. Yeah, right. <laughs> And, and, and so is that that that's something that I, I find interesting is is yeah the the Verveke colonization, how deep does it go? Because is is Jordan Hall then uh, an advocate of you know um you know Verveke said there was those three paths forward, right? Status quo, um 
you know, one side conquers the other or, or dialogue. Um, I, I, I find, I like for Vicky, I find it hard to believe that, Oh, America and the world is just going to become Catholic or it's just going to become Orthodox or it's just going to become, you know, whatever McMo the church McMo founds. Um, <laughs> it, 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 it's, not a chance, not a chance of all, all the above, right? And so it, the the thing is, uh, um, yeah, that was yeah. a good comment. <laughs> that is a good comment. He's full of them, um, but uh, you know, like the, this this vague Christianity that TLC adjacent conversations are kind of pointing to um, is is Jordan Hall kind of a microcosm of that, where it's like here is just generic Christianity as such that you, you know, believe in this and embody this, this personality with, with God. And I don't know. I, I, it's well, just, I, it's my perspective on this. Cause he's going to um, John here's conference with uh, Jonathan Peugeot in. Uh, oh my goodness. That's crazy. And so he's going to be a speaker at this. <laughs> So who is imagine if, my, imagine if John Hears' his brother was there. Oh my goodness, that'd be it's crazy. A, it's a Tomada, it's a Tomada fundraising event down in Florida. And the thing about it is I think in some way, because Jordan actually just posted a, something about free will on Twitter that I couldn't quite comprehend completely, but it, I think it was actually kind of a, a deterministic take. And um, you know, he's in like a Presbyterian country up there. There's a Presbyterian college close to where he's at and and different types of stuff. But what's interesting to me is I, th as he navigates, um, you know, his faith is like kind of what we, we encounter in this internet space and, and he's not, um, you know, uh, whatever he, he can't escape that either is that intellectually, maybe he does feel Orthodox, but he doesn't, he's not in a Orthodox community and you have that, type of thing just happening now all over the place you know yeah, because and, the orthodox community is is very di disruptive to yeah. a, a lot of just but there are know, parts of there are yeah. parts of what his community looks like that fit into this uh you know the the low church community aspect of it the more kind of mennonite community aspect of, of a very low church has the community aspects of the ideal some of the community aspects of like an ideal orthodoxy um, well, and that's what Paul Vanderclay always would posit that orthodoxy's um, contribution to America is not going to be everyone's orthodox. You know, it, it's it's the 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 types of thinking about certain things that will be per, co colonizing and pervasive through the, you know, psyche of a lot of these groups. So, and then, um, yeah, and, yeah. And, so, and then there's these relationships because that are real, but like friendship, um, between people like, uh, you know, Jonathan Peugeot and, um, and, and, and Hall and, uh, and John hears, you know, and, um, you know, it's just, you know, for whatever reason. And then, and some of it's status, you just have to like, yes, people, totally. I mean, some of it's status yeah. and, 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 and yeah. fundraising and all that kind of stuff. And, and that has to be just acknowledged and, and be like, yeah, that's true too. That's real. And, and so whatever, you know I mean? I think, that's they're probably going to try work. to make it. They're probably going to do what they tried to do with John Verveke and have this little powwow where they try to get him to be Orthodox somehow. I, I, I totally, because if you don't, if you guys aren't aware, John here is his brother is, his father, Peter here is a notorious uh, online Orthodox presence, right? Um, very controversial in some spheres. Um, but this is all to say that th the the Hears brothers really kind of represent w what is kind of happening culturally. Is there going to be this this upfront, you know, we're going to win with facts and logic, with the right rhetoric about theology, and you're just going to become orthodox, um, or is there going to be some sort of synthesis through dialogue and whatnot? So, well, I think that was part of. I mean, even in one of the conversations I had with Jordan is like you become a Christian in this community. Like this community came around him for his wedding. Like that's not nothing, you know? And it's yeah, like, yeah. And, and they're on and you're not going to get that in orthodoxy unless it, you're Greek or something. And, and so you're, then there's this piece of, uh, well, so you're in that and 
and you're evolving together because they are they aren't in a stagnant like well we're just a nothing i think they they're trying to figure out maybe if they want to become something or attach mm -hmm. themselves to something more i guess maybe maybe not but um but yeah going down there and it i don't know if that's exactly what they're doing i think part of it just is about the fundraising because you had um richard roland and uh the uh, vesper stamper do the other the rec the other recent one that they had up in the northwest oh yeah as yeah. they're kind of keynote people for tomata so you know i mean i don't know i don't want to overthink that but um i'd like to go <laughs> yeah 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 so christian question yeah what are What's your up? what are your current thoughts on evolution creation stuff where are you oh at? yeah great question <laughs> yeah uh like i mean i think i probably like i I kind of settled into some of the ID stuff. I haven't, I haven't like gone back and, and looked at it specifically, I, but, but, but basically I don't have a problem with evolution being true. I don't even have, I don't have a problem with any of it actually. Um, I just think that there's something that the Christianizing version, I mean, there's also theistic evolution, but like the Christianizing version that is in, uh, that purpose is intrinsic and that design is intrinsic, I think is, is important. It's, it's something that makes sense for me, I guess you could say, um, um you know, so now, Adam and Eve, what's up with them? Oh no. Is this a debate now? No, uh, just asking I, they are, they are, uh, they, it's enough for them to be metaphorically true for me. If they are literally true, then they are. If they're not, it's enough that they're metaphorically true. How's that? Sounds you good. should uh, you should read up on uh, Bol Bolgakov's um, a temporal fall. Just Google search that. Oh, that's, that's kind of a idea. popular. Time before, what was it? Peugeot recently. I like he had an answer to this question recently that I liked, which was like the world we know is ten thousand years old. Like that's the world we that's the world we know. Yeah, right, right. And then the world that yeah. we don't know, whatever is whatever. And yeah. I'm I'm like cool. You know, and that doesn't I'm not like trying to answer the question. I just don't think it the biggest problem is that it's such a big problem, like for that or it used to be such a big problem for people. Um, I think to me that's and and I just I like what um I think that the powerful arguments that Peterson used, like you know, the crabs and the trees and like hierarchies, hierarchies older than <laughs> I heard yeah. he's 400 billion years old. You're not going to get able to get around that. Yeah. You know, like that kind yeah. of stuff was really powerful. And I think that when I think about like, then like the fractal reality of that to in structures that we see in the world, whether it's very small or big or human, like I'm like, yeah, that, that looks, that fits for me, you know? So I don't know if that, if that answers your question, Sam or not, but. Sure. Uh, when you're, does you're, the Old Testament switch gears into being historical in a more literal way? Genesis, well, Exodus, I don't know. Who knows? Um, the patriarch. What do, what do you think, Sam? <laughs> I, I, I generally think Abraham stuff. Yeah, is when we kind of make a switch. And I was uh, origin. I was I. I had kind of come up with that idea in my mind, and origin says exactly the same thing. Yeah. That that we switch to something more. We switch to having an actual literal layer with the the story of Abraham, and before that, there it was only at the allegorical level. Well, and I and think even that's with, what. Oh, sorry. I would just say even with the Abrahamic story, that I I'm comfortable with there being parts of that that we that we've lost or don't understand that are that have deep truth within it that just in the literal just in the literal part of it like i'm okay with that being attached to a to a rich myth as well like no. but i'm also okay with it saying it happened you know like i think something you know something happened there like, well you know, for origin that's how all all scripture is spiritually true yeah all of it is also morally true and that you could draw applications and moral lessons for your life from it and stuff like that but only some of scripture is literally true also but everything that's literally true is simultaneously morally and spiritually true um yeah. and uh so that so he would never say that this is only literally true that's just not how it works for him and i think the big the biggest piece of this conversation is that there was a time where it was believed that it was a linchpin that if it if if evolution is true then it is a linchpin that none of it's true yes and, yeah and right it, exactly and, and yeah. i think that that was the biggest um 
that's been the, one of the biggest changes in, mm-hmm. the, in, in the power of, of, of what Peterson and Peugeot and stuff have, have done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I think a lot of that too is, is, uh, you know, uh, something Jonathan would talk about a lot is, you know, the medieval idea of, you know, you're having confidence in your place in the story. And you, I, there was a period where I was like autistically obsessed with world chronicles. And it's funny that, you know, Sam. So you were, you predate Richard Rowland then. Oh, uh, I don't know about that. There are things I disagree with him about because he will make blatant statements about things. And I'm like, uh, I'm that. like T-Grod. I'll go T-Grod mode on him, you know, on, on some of these things. <laughs> there was but, a fact wrong in there, Richard Rowling. Yeah, yeah, if you're going to do yeah. the fact thing, you got to have the facts. I know, I know, yeah. But um, no, so it's funny how Sam, you know, says, you know, oh, Abraham. Uh, well, that's like historically one a close of, you know, into like the third age or something. Or, you know, you'd have the world segmented into different ages, right? And so the time that we are in now is the last age and it will continue as long as God wills it to. And as long as we don't call them dispensations. Oh, uh, right. Of course. Well, yeah, everyone called them ages. Uh, So, you know, I'm, I'm safe there. Um, But uh, this, this idea that there was actually something that changed significantly and it's not just like an arbitrary dispensation um, that, that something actually did happen and changed the world in every possible element of the world. Something changed after the incarnation. Um, something changed after the fall. Something changed after the the flood or something, right? Like these. Something these changed are, after AI and social yeah. media. It sh- right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Uh, so, I don't know. I I I think it's a we 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 turned our attention so much in in such an autistic frame of. If this isn't literally true, then the whole thing is bunk, like you said, you know, so. Man, I, I do have to say, I think that Protestantism mostly got burnt out on the whole allegorical thing, because a lot of the stuff that they didn't like about the Catholic Church was defended using allegorical interpretation. And so instead of doing the thing of, well, your allegorical interpretation isn't right, here's a better allegorical interpretation, they're yeah. like, we could just throw out, we could just undermine the whole thing by saying no allegorical interpretation. Yeah. Um, and so I do think that that is something that Protestant took, Protestantism took a while to recover from. But that same bitter taste about like, I mean, you can still kind of see it when, you know, online Catholics will try and defend the Pope or something like that. Um, you know, that you'll still see some of those allegorical interpretations that, you know, support the idea of a papacy and, you know, things along those lines. But uh, I, I just don't feel like it's as scary anymore. And so I think that um, it, that that sense is coming back. And I would say to, to wrap to kind of wrap it back around just that that's I mean, at least in these spaces, you know, Peterson was a big reason for that. I mean, and, and Peugeot, they are a big, big, big reason of at least how it's happening online. And as it then it disseminates in the relationships mm-hmm. of people that that I do think we are seeing that change across the board, you know? So man, guys, I've got to shut this down. I'm yeah. glad y'all came on and uh, really, really glad. Um, this was, like I said, this was kind of a therapeutic thing for me to kind of get back on and, and kind of walk through some stuff and be like, okay. And I want to encourage everyone uh, check out the, my conversation with Benjamin coming out on Friday uh, and I, it'll be up kind of after Paul's live stream or thereabouts. So Sam, and uh i promise not to release any videos on that day i also might be at the hospital on that day sorry (laughs) krishna i've stepped on your toes in the past but yeah man well boy or girl boy okay three i have three girls so far and number four is a boy so wow continuing the line here we go (laughs) continuing the line yeah finally except i love girls they are yeah of course we love our girls (laughs) Yeah. Joseph, Sam, thanks for yeah. coming on. Everyone yep, else, thanks. watch the first 30 minutes of this video about my take on evolution. Uh, metaphorically, Hot take, blood sports. Literally, metaphorically, literally, and uh, whatever else. Uh, uh, raccoons have quills. <laughs> if you look, I could, you could see I wrote <laughs> porcupine. It was, I was nervous my, early on talking on the camera. All right, guys. We'll All see right, you all thanks. later. Yeah, bye. All right. Goodbye. Thanks, Christian.